In this video, we're going to look at how to display a depth profile that has been measured by XPS and etch cycles from an iron beam. These data have been organized so that a set of high resolution scans have been measured and regions are defined on each one of these, the exception of the aluminium 2P where both a region and a pair of component peaks have been used to separate intensity from two different chemical states for aluminium. So to construct a depth profile, and it requires these regions to be set up with the appropriate relative sensitivity factors, a background, and also an escape depth correction for the corresponding relative sensitivity factors. This is a Schofield cross-section that has been corrected for an angular distribution correction relative to a, an S orbital where the angle between the X-ray source and the analyzer is 45 degrees. So these data were measured from a quantum 2000. And similarly, we have a pair of components and these two have the appropriate RSF for the combined part of a doublet for an aluminum 2P. So we've got two components on the aluminium and regions on the oxygen, carbon, nitrogen and fluorine. So on the report spec page, if you look at the custom report, you can see the top part reports all of the different regions and components that are available. So there's actually an extra term here that is the aluminium 2P region that I've not included in this formula table here, which just is using the components rather than the region itself. So the aluminium metal and the other compound is separated by the components and only these components are used rather than the region which would include both at the same time. So the formula table is just the names of these components and regions and if I press the area report I end up with a table that consists of for each entity so each component or region that we used we've got a column and these first of all represent counts per second normalized for the escape depth RSF and transmission and then we have another table next to it which represents the atomic concentration as measured by these peaks so to create a profile you go to the file menu and you say create profile. There's another term here that says add profile. This will allow you to put a, a display which will be associated with the original spectroscopic file. If we say create profile then a new VAMAS file is created and these contain traces that are organized from the table that was previously seen as a quantification table. So the first row would represent the second set of entities in that table and that's to say the atomic concentration as a percentage and the second row is the profile in terms of the counts per second EV. So the display of these traces is managed by various options on the tile display parameters dialog window. If we go to the display property page you can see that you can turn off a title so right now the profile title has been taken from the first VAMAS block which is aluminium 2p percent. If I turn that off it goes away. I can add in rather than the rather than using the VAMAS block name and here is the VAMAS block I can use the sample identifier that has been assigned to these data as as the title so that's what this use id means so the title derives from this sample id which is coming from these vamas blocks and then we have the vamas block identifiers which are all labeling the traces in this basic method where it's simply indicating what the the traces are but if you want to see in terms of a display, you can set the draw key and then when you draw, draw a key, these labels that were put on the traces for a profile have been taken off and they now appear ordered as you can see in the right hand side. There's another button here that says key on left. If I select that one, we've got draw key and the key on left. So you see that once again, you get the same key, but it's just moved to the other side. 
But both of these buttons here disable the display of the labels on the traces. So if I untick this draw key, so no key is drawn, uh, but leave this one ticked, then the display is without any labels whatsoever. So let me just add the width, give it a little bit more width to the lines. And having done that, we'll now look at how to label these in a custom way. And th there are buttons on the Peak Labels property page on the Annotation dialog window that are labels on the active block or label on each block. So there, these two buttons have slightly different functions. The first one labels, as it says, the active block. And the active block is the first one that was selected in this row here. So it's the aluminium 2P percent block that is the active block. And if I say label on the active block, what happens is the annotation history shows you that you've got a set of labels and these are all on the active VAMAS block that's displayed in this display tile. Now let's contrast that with what happens if I display these traces that are counts per second EV. If rather than I use the labels on the active block, if I say label on each block, so these are one, two, three, four, five, six, six different VAMAS blocks. And when I select this one, you'll see what appear to be the same labels. However, if you look at the annotation history, we've got one label on each one of these. And the color for the labels is defined by the traces when overlaid in the active tile. So they now have the correct colors only when overlaid as a, as a group when that button was first pressed. So if we look at the first row where we've got all of the labels on the active tile, you can see that the boxes indicating that annotation can be moved are all available to you. And that's one of the advantages of having the labels defined using this first button, that labels on active tile. If they're on individual VAMAS blocks, you have to manipulate the label position based on the individual VAMAS blocks one at a time. But this way, with them all on the active tile, I can move them around and attempt to adjust. See what we've got, that's a fluorine. So we just adjust these labels so that they are better positioned for the data. So that's a nitrogen. And then you can step up and just move out and then maybe add shapes. And take a copy and then paste into Word, say.